Himalayas. The unique rustic Alps had a long trail of journey to become the majestic structure that it is now. The formation journey began from the late Jurassic era to the late 45th century. This range of mountains of Asia separates the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateaus, and these beautiful mountain chains are situated in Pakistan, India, Nepal, and Bhutan. In this video, we'll take you through the journey of the formation of this enormous beauty. It definitely was not an overnight process. It took roughly around 100 million years for it to become what it is today. And no, it didn't stop growing yet. Who knows, in another 100 million years, the Himalayas might even become double the size. The Himalayan mountains was the result of two continents when they collided with each other. To understand this, let's dig into the history. It began during the late Jurassic period, 160 million years ago, when dinosaurs were still existing on Earth. During that period, the structure of the Earth was also different, and no continent had definite shape and structure. Back then, North America was contiguous with Africa, South America, and Europe. They all existed as a single continent called Pangaea. That was the case of India as well. India was just a huge landmass that was separated from Asia by a huge ocean called Tatus Ocean. So this landmass had two parts, Greater India and Lesser India, which does not exist anymore. This landmass was connected to Australia. Later on, subduction occurred in the Tatus Ocean and Pangaea broke apart, leading to the breakup of India and Australia. After the separation, India rotated clockwise and moved towards north at 15 centimeters per year. Then 75 to 65 million years ago, after the dinosaurs became extinct, India approached the Asian continent, then caught as Eurasian plates. 45 million years ago, India finally reached Asia and then joined Asia. So when the two continents, Eurasia and India collided, this resulted in the formation of the Himalayas. So how did this collision cause the birth of these structures? Well, the collision occurred due to continental pressure. When continental landmasses have about the same rock density, one plate could not be subducted under the other. The force underneath the Eurasian continental crust plate began to split up, and 2,000 kilometers of India was lost due to compression between the continents and overthrusting. This finally resulted in thickening of continental crust over 70 kilometers twice its normal thickness. The other 50% of India plate was also lost while pushing China, Mongolia, and Eastwick along its faults, and this led to the forming of sedimentary basins with sedimentary rocks such as granite, batholith, and volcanic stones. Due to the formation of these basins, it decreased the rate of plate movements. So the sedimentary rocks, which was accumulated due to compression in the geosyncline lines or also called tatiths, developed Tibetan plateaus, which grew rapidly. And within just 50 million years, Mount Everest was formed and rose above more than 9 kilometers. Subsequent mountains were formed near it. Did you know the Himalayas are also called as the third pole of the world? Being just 70 million years old means the youngest mountain ranges in the world, but it still spreads across 4.2 million square feet, storing the highest amount of snow and ice after the North and South Pole, which is why it is called as the third pole of the world. These mighty structures are still believed to be geographically alive as they grow an inch every year. So, are the Himalayas still growing? Yes, yeah, scientists say that the stones are the rocks that are lying below the snow-capped peaks once laid on the ocean floor. So clearly, the depositions will lead to the further growth of the mountains. These rocks won't degrade easily either, as they are covered in blankets of snow protecting it from chemical reaction in the air, preventing it from degrading. Due to this frequent movement of the Indian plate into the Asian plate, it also leads to earthquakes from time to time. But as a crescent as it sounds, Rachel Headley, an associate professor of geosciences at the University of Wisconsin, told in an interview that you would eventually run out of your tectonic forces and then it would stop growing. Scientific consensus also predicts that the Earth mantle will cool to such a degree that tectonic movement will eventually end. And, if Everest does continue to rise, even after that at some point, it will become so steep and unstable that large chunks will begin to fall off. So until then, the Himalayan mountains will stand tall, holding high in its position the Mount Everest, as well as the other 108 highest peaks in the world, feeding the major perennial rivers like Indus, Ganja, and Mekong, and surrounding and guarding the four countries. So if you like this video, like, share, and comment your prediction about the future of the Himalayas. And don't forget to follow our channel for similar content.